Well, welcome back to uh, Ben Kleinberg's channel. Um, I'm Ben, obviously. Today, I said I would have uh, a surprise for you in one of my videos, and yes, I do. Here is one of the two surprises. This is yet another freebie computer. Um, my, um, I actually have to uh, thank um, one of my uh, doctor friends, uh, neurological doctors, uh, Dr. Tim Hallinan, thank you so much for this computer. Um, it's a great vintage old uh, game. I can turn it into a great vintage gaming PC. Um, but first, I should probably tell you what it is. This is, I know it's on its side because I can't stand it up in this room, but it's a Dell Dimension XPS T450. I haven't seen the Dimension XPS line in years. It has a Pentium 3 and designed for Windows NT 98 sticker on the front, or stickers on the front. Um, there's the power button and the reset button. There's a good old fashioned 3.5 inch floppy. It even has a zip disk drive here. I've actually never seen a zip disk in my lifetime, but it has a zip disk drive, so maybe I'll get some zip disks to test it out and see if it still works. You got the CD-ROM drive here, which does work. I have put a Windows 2000 CD in there to test it to make sure it works, and it boots off the CD, no problem. Um, it's one of those uh, drives that has the um, audio jack, CD audio jack for listening to audio CDs. Um, I know a lot of people back in the day would get this, would confuse this with the audio jack on the back of the computer, because and they'd plug the speakers in here and wonder why it wasn't working and why this volume adjustment wasn't working. The reason being is because these por this port here only works when you're playing when you're playing something uh, CD audio using the Windows CD player in Windows 9X um, or in I think I don't know if it works in Windows Media Player but I know I've tested it in Windows CD player it works just fine um, you know with headphones um, the other but yeah that's the only time this will work if you want to hear audio from the speakers you have to plug it into the back which I'll show a little bit later but yeah that's the CD drive does work go ahead and take a look inside the case to remove the cover on this case you just uh, you just uh, come on focus camera don't be don't be uh, don't be uh, a nuisance this early in the morning okay there it goes well somewhat um, you just unscrew this um, and then pull it back and then there are these two tabs here there's one here and then there's one over there you push those together and then you can just lift the side panel off like so and here's the inside of the case. Um, there's this um, metal bar here, but you can remove it by simply um, lifting up here. And then this piece just comes right out. And then you have access to everything. Now, because this came from a therapist, um, the hard drive was removed uh, because it obviously had patient data on it. And I understand that therapists could lose their license if the licenses if they... Um, if they were to give me a computer with patient data still on it and I happened to stumble upon it, um, I offered to just re, re wipe the drive and reformat, but the therapist insisted that I just remove the hard drive, so that's what I did. It's pretty dusty in this case. I am going to have to dust this out, but um, go ahead and take a look inside. Start from here. Here's the power supply dated August 30th, 1999. Uh, according to the Dell website, amazingly, the service tag still pulled up. This machine was built on September 8th, 1999. Um, so, obviously, well, you can figure, you can see what to expect with this machine. Here's a CD-ROM drive here. Here's the, uh, zip disk here, and then the floppy drive here. This is where the hard drive would go. Uh, this is the caddy right here. This one's actually kind of weird, because you put the hard drive in here, and then the screws, to put the screws in, you have to remove the front bezel here to put the screws in. I've never seen a hard drive like that, but then, of course, there's the IDE cable here to plug it into. Um, and then, of course, there's your uh, four-pin Molex here. There's also, like Dell usually does, there's also a uh, connector for a secondary drive. So if you wanted to, this bracket, that's what this bracket here is for. That's for a secondary IDE drive if you wanted to install a secondary drive. I'm going to be installing a, either an 80 gig or a 150 gigabyte drive in there. So um, I guess we'll, so I really don't need a secondary hard drive because I'll be installing probably Windows 2K or Millennium on this machine, uh, just to have something vintage. And then we have our expansion cards here. There's our ATI Rage uh, video card. Uh, since I haven't been able to boot into Windows, I can't figure out what the model number is. The BIOS doesn't tell me, but um, let me just turn the case around so you can actually see that. 
bear with me here with the less than desirable camera work. There's the video card. It's got this, um, ugh, come on, you piece of crap. Uh, it's got this uh, IDE light connector on it. I'm not exactly sure what that is because I haven't seen a video card this old in ages. It is an AGP card. This does have an AGP slot, fortunately, so I don't, I'm not stuck with PCI like I was in the Dimension 2350. So at least this, at least Dell had some common sense to put an AGP slot in here. Um, there's, um, but yeah, there's, uh, this video card here, that's the ATI Rage card, you can tell, you might not be able to see that, but it has the ATI 3D logo, and eh, the camera won't focus, but it has an ATI Radeon 3D logo on it, and an ATI logo. Then here is the Sound Blaster audio card, uh, or sound card, rather, that's what they call it back in the day. Good old-fashioned 32-bit PCI, or Peripheral Component Interconnect, if you don't know what PCI stands for. There are a total of uh, five PCI slots, two of which are occupied, and there's an ISA slot. You might not be able to, you can probably see just the, the tip of it, but yes, there is an ISA slot in here. And that rear card is just a modem, if you didn't know. But that's typical for a machine from, this, from, that, from the Pentium 3 era. What I, would, what I am thinking about doing, though, as for upgrades, is moving the modem card to one of these PCI slots here, and then in the IS... I, I want to use the ISA slot just for nostalgia reasons. I, for nostalgic reasons, I want to use the ISA slot and maybe install an Ethernet card in there. It'll be an old one, because this thing really isn't capable of m modern Ethernet speeds. So I'll just install an old e ISA Ethernet card, maybe a thick net, just to reminisce of the day, about the days of old. There's the CMOS battery there, which I've replaced because the original one was long dead. Um, and there are the RAM slots. This machine is a little strange in that respect because it actually has three RAM slots, maxes out at 768 megabytes. I've never seen a computer that maxes out at such a strange and peculiar amount of RAM. Uh, but this one, apparently Dell decided 768 was how much it could handle. Not bad, though. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I've got... Uh, I, it's supposed to have 576 megabytes in there. The BIOS detects two 256 megabyte modules and one 64 megabyte module in the middle. However, the BIOS only recognizes 320 megabytes of RAM during the during the RAM check. So maybe one of these is going bad. I don't know. But if, if one of them was going bad, it should have told me during the memory check. But the BIOS is not recognizing all of the RAM, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, and then under the shroud here, you'll see a site that you ha probably haven't seen since the late 90s. Yes, there is a processor card installed in here. Remember those? Yes, because back in 97 or 98 when the Pentium 2 first came out, Intel stopped making chips for a little bit and started shipping their processors on cards like this. They were actually a lot easier to install because you didn't have to worry about lining up the notches or the golden arrow or anything like that. You just put the you just plop the card in like an expansion card and away you went. And then of course plug the CPU fan in so that the system didn't overheat. Of course, Dell has decided that they wanted to use their own proprietary fan and shroud because that's how Dell is or was back in the day. But um but uh yeah, the I'm probably it's a, this is a 450 megahertz Katmai. I would like to upgrade it to maybe a, um, if I can, I'd like to upgrade it to at least a 600 megahertz, or better yet, an 800 megahertz, so I could attempt to load a Vista on this thing once I get 512 megabytes of RAM in this thing. Uh, once I get the, the system to recognize the 512 megabytes, that is. Uh, just to see how crappy Vista would run on here, because, I mean, I do have an AGP video card slot, so, you know, it is possible that I could run Arrow on a Pentium 3, but, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I won't get my hopes up. Anyways, but there's the Pentium 3 processor card. Uh, I think they even made a 1 gigahertz uh, model of this. I don't know if it's a cat mine. It might be a copper mine. If it's a copper mine, then it won't work. But hopefully it's a cat mine so I can install it on this machine. In this machine, rather. Uh, but yeah, obviously the CPU card is quite dusty because this machine hasn't been used in quite some time. So, um, I, of course, since there's th since the hard drive is missing, I can't go back in and figure out the last time this machine this was this machine was used. But you know, it's uh, I know it's from '99 because the date on the as the date on the power supply would suggest, and of course the Dell website. On the back, there's our power supply. We've got our PS2 ports, USB keyboard and mouse USB ports. There are USB 1.0 ports, a serial port, parallel diagnostic lights, which Dell puts on all their machines. Video card, which is just VGA. Um, I'd like to upgrade the video card, though. Um, maybe I'll put an NVIDIA card in there, or uh, just something a little better. Maybe even one that has DVI, because, um, you know, why not? <laughs> 
And um, then, of course, you've got your sound card here. You've got your line in, microphone in, speakers in. And uh, I think that's for uh, surround sound, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, your good old-fashioned MIDI uh, game uh, joystick port. Then of course on the modem you've got your uh, two, you've got your RJ11 jacks one for the one that goes to the telephone one that goes to the wall and then you have two audio jacks these older modems have audio jacks so you can actually hear the dial up noise when you um, from your internal modem <laughs> uh, you could actually connect this to an external speaker if you wanted to um, of course I'm not going to be using the modem well maybe I will because I mean I have set up a dial up connection on my Macintosh Performa 5215 CD. But we'll see. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm probably just going to end up using that wireless adapter there to get this on the internet once I install Windows and get a hard drive installed in here. So yeah, that's about the best of this machine. Uh, it's definitely going to get dusted first, though. I mean, because there is there ain't no way in hell I'm going to be using a machine like this with all that dust in there. Because I mean, the problem with dust is dust could dust is pretty much cancer to your computer. Um, it really is. Because, uh, especially with that much dust in the CPU fan like that, that is just not good at all. So go ahead and put the cover back on. I'm not going to put it back on all the way because I'm going to be opening this up later and making another video on me upgrading the hardware. Currently, I've ordered a hard drive for it, but, you know, I could always put a, I could always use a few extra parts. Uh, I'm just going to be showing, making a video showing me installing Windows 2K or Millennium. I've got a 2K CD in there now, but I might put Millennium on it just because, just because to see how bad Millennium really is. All right, so let's go ahead and boot it up. And uh, since there's no hard drive, we'll just be booting into the BIOS, but we'll go ahead and power the system on. And on these older Dells, the BIOS key is delete. Um, on the newer Dells made after 01, um, the BIOS key is F2, but on these older Dells, it's uh, delete. And you can see there's the old Dell Earth logo with Dell.com. See, it's doing a memory check right now. But you'll see in a minute here, it's a four, yeah, as I said, 450 megahertz Pentium 3, Dimension XPS T450, BIOS version A04. Um, yep, see, it only recognized 320 megabytes. So there's obviously a problem with the, with, this, with the RAM configuration. Okay, so here's the BIOS. Here's what it looks like. Looks like a good old-fashioned BIOS. You can get a lot of information here, too. There's Pentium 3, 450 megahertz, 512 kilobyte cache. There's the service tag. If you want to look that up, it will come up. It'll tell you September 8th, 99. Um, of course, there's the 320 megabytes, though. You can see it's it says that there's 256 megabytes in the edge slots and 64 megabytes in the middle. So that should say 576 megabytes because 256 and 256 is 512 plus 64 is 576. So it should be detecting 576 megabytes. Unfortunately, there's a problem and it's only recognizing 320. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, okay, apparently it hosed my settings because I enabled processor serial number, but whatever. Um, there's a system time and date there. Then, of course, plug and play OS. I am going to be installing a plug and play OS. So let me uh, change that to yes. Um, there's peripheral configurations here. You're going to see a lot of old stuff like serial port configuration, uh, parallel port. Um, I could change that, but I'm probably not going to be using any of that. Video configuration. There's no password, fortunately. Well, there was, but I cleared this. I just cleared it with the CMOS jumper. Power save settings, system boot settings, and um, it can even boot off of a network, believe it or not. For this, for a machine this old, I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes, and it tells me that um, it says that I have to return the jumper to the normal position for the settings to take effect. It tells me it's safe to power off, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, um, the jumper's in its, in its original position now. I don't know why it says it needs to be reset because that just resets the BIOS settings. But the system works, and um, I hope hopefully by next week I'll have an OS loaded on it, and I might make a video of myself installing it. Oh, and as for the G the revived GX150, well, it's not so revived now, because the hard drive, as I predicted, died. Um, it started making clicking noises, and it, Windows eventually failed to boot. And with that keyboard failure problem, I just didn't even bother, because they only sell refurbished motherboards, and I got a refurbished board, and it did not work. It still said keyboard failure. With both PS2 and USB keyboards, again, tried resetting the CMOS, tried reseating the battery, nothing worked. So, this machine is just going to get retired. Um, I've already scrapped the CD-ROM drive and the RAM, some of the RAM that was in here went into this machine. Um, the floppy drive didn't work. Um, it actually died after I made the video of me showing Windows Millennium on it. The floppy drive died. The video card I'll probably put into another SFF case. 
And as for the Pentium 3 in there, it's a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3, so I'll just put that into storage uh, until I can find another use for it. Um, I don't know about the power supply because it's a USFF power supply, so I really don't know much. I really don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. But yes, rip the Dell Dimension uh, or uh, Optiplex GX150. It had a good life, but it's dead now. And you know, I think I, it wasn't really a good vintage gaming computer because it was a USFF case. This here is the real deal. So um, yeah. Now, there's no COA on this machine that I can show you. If there were a COA for Windows 98, I would show it to you, but there's not. Probably because this shipped with first edition, and they didn't start putting COAs on computers until second edition came out. But yeah, there you have it, the Dell XPS T, uh, Dimension XPS T450. See you guys in the next video.